A few weeks ago, I finished Code Vein, and for the most part, I had an absolute blast. I got all of the endings, nearly all of the blood codes, and the bosses are great and pretty memorable, for the most part. So why does this game, which I otherwise had loads of fun with, only feel average in my eyes? Aside from a few of the worst enemy designs and fights, the semi-repetitive maps, and the City of Falling Flame, one reason stands head and shoulders above the rest. The story. Honestly, Code Vein has a lot of things going for it, but I was already turned off somewhat by the opening tutorial basically preaching to you how special you are before the game even starts, and the final ending didn't feel worth it. I've tried to figure out why, and tried it down to a few key character issues with the likes of EO. But why do only the bare minimum? So in today's video, I'm going to talk you through all, well, most of, the main characters of Code Vein, and what I would change about them to make them more memorable, and make the game as a whole a far more powerful experience, in order to make Code Vein go from a meh game to a yeah game. Louis. Louis's compassion could have been played more strongly, and even in some cases as a weakness. This is a man who gives two months' supplies to an enemy on a whim. Two months' supplies of a resource that is pretty scarce. In doing so, and doing so so freely, it makes it harder for the audience to believe that such a resource is scarce in the first place, especially with the only consequence of this action being one quip from Yakimo saying that Another issue with Louis is his relationship with his sister Karen. The reveal of her survival is a big part of the opening of the second half. <laughs> But it took me two playthroughs to understand why, and I still don't feel any connection or resonance with it after three. Karen is next to invisible in the story, aside from a few brief mentions, and for a better impact she should have been built up more. Maybe Louis's motivation is to help everyone, and that is due to his sister's legacy. He wants to be like her, and greatly admired the work that she did for others. Perhaps the medicine that he uses to track the blood veins is derived from a formula that she created. Something to establish her, and establish how her absence is a really big deal for Louis. So that when he does finally meet her, his emotional outburst makes more sense than when it did when I first played through. Yakumo. Yakumo probably receives my biggest change. I'd love to see more of the gruff, unfriendly atmosphere he puts out at the very beginning of the game, before he accepts you into the group. I'd like to see him balancing out Louis's impulsive compassion with cool, harsh reasoning. Have him berate Louis for being too free with his blood bees, for always taking on new people when their supplies are low enough already. Bring back that military history in the fight against the Queen, and make it so that he hasn't moved on from his old friends. My version of Yakumo hinges on building up to the reveal of Emily and Miguel having been experimented on by Mido, as well as properly selling how much they mean to him. No forced conversation and photographs is a way of bringing them up. Yeah. Instead, we'll use the onigiri scene. Instead of talking about how he eats to remain human, Yakumo instead, on who an up until this point has been incredibly dismissive of you, suddenly bursts out and explains that he eats onigiri in particular to remember his old friends. But yet, yeah, his friends need to mean so much to him that he can't help but explain the significance of a simple action that doesn't mean anything to anyone else, and that he doesn't even need to do anymore. This scene should have focused on the importance of the onigiri, not the importance of him eating. By setting up this subplot correctly, Yokomo's arc can end after you defeat the successor of the claw. Regardless of if you save or doom Emily, he finally gets closure. And then, that's when he opens up to you and the rest, having learnt to move on and appreciate who is with him, 
instead of longing for those who aren't. As an additional point, setting up Emily and Miguel as being dead or missing more powerful and earlier on means that when it turns out that Mido has been experimenting on them, we have a stronger reason to hate him. As opposed to the first introduction we get to him, which is this line. And that tells us nothing about Mido. Mia. Mia is actually from the angle of this video, one of the strongest characters in Code Vein. Her introduction is excellent and plays really well into the blood bead drought. Until Louis once again proves he can make them out of thin air. We know how much she loves Nicola just from this one scene as she drops everything to protect him. And as such, losing him is devastating to us too. My only change would be to add a second goal that entwines with the first. Not just have her go after answers, but also go after Jack specifically. This makes the moment she forgives him even more powerful. Although, as a whole, this is just a single detail. And her part of the story is excellent, even the whole way through, even without it. Jack. I think Jack needed a better world up. That's about it. You're supposed to know that he's the bad guy by watching the opening animation. Except I never realised that was a thing until I left my Xbox on by accident and it started playing. While I knew when we met that he was the hunter, those words didn't really mean anything. And I think either way to set him up better and make this first introduction much more powerful. Firstly, introduce him much, much earlier, even before you wake up in Eo's lap at the very beginning of the game. Drop the tutorial section with Cross, and instead work the tutorial into the ruined undergrounds with Oliver explaining everything instead. That will also bring you closer to Oliver's character, so when he turns, that's more powerful as well. And then, at the very beginning of the game, instead of the tutorial, have a flashback. Now, this flashback needs two important shots. It can have any number of them, but it needs these two following shots. Cruz begging you to save everyone. This should draw in the audience, because they don't know anything about Cruz. They don't know who she is, what relation she has to you, and why she gives you this goal. And hopefully, that will make them want to play through Francis for that. And that means that when it turns out that Cruz is the queen later on, that will mean more to the player as well. And that should also help solidify Louis' story again. But the second one is a shot of Jack murdering you. <laughs> this means that regardless of the blood spring subplot in the first half, whether that interests you or not, the player should still be interested in figuring out who Jack is. Then, the first time you meet him, you will recognise him. His face means something. You know who he is and why the hunter is so dangerous, because you've seen him do it before. This is the man who once murdered you. And then, have him and Ava teleport away before Louis and Yakimo can get answers. And then, as a slight change after that, put the insatiable despot after that scene instead of before. In this way, Jack now stands as another reason the player should play the game, in order to solve their own murder and better understand who the villain is. And as a result, the reveal that actually he is one of the good guys is much, much stronger, and hopefully can draw people even closer to an ultimately tragic and very, very good character. Silver. Silver is one of the greatest tragedies of Code Vein because there is so much that could have been done with his character. Here is a man who led armies against his own daughter, who calls her a monster, and yet resigns himself to eternal servitude, holding up the mists so his people might be safe. I want to know so much more about him, and feel so much more could have been done 
In the opening act, set him up as a tyrant, bullying everyone with his Cerberus forces and taking their blood beads. Don't just tell us that this happened, show us. Have the troops storm into the camp. Ignore the use of other revenants as thralls and slaves. Just take the blood beads and leave. Make Davies a little more intimidating. Or, more sympathetic, have him speak of how he does not agree with the brutality of some of his co-workers. Show that there is disapproval of the way that he does things. Maybe Louis has an additional reason for his goal of wanting to halt the blood tax. But then, halfway through, we get to see him in wartime. We get to see that this man is a man who cares for his people. Let us know that he didn't take credit for killing the queen, but handed it down to you even after your supposed death and that he immortalized your sacrifice, and then at the conclusion, reveal how the blood he takes is so that he can put all of his energy into maintaining the mists to protect his people. Let us know more about his relationship with Cruz. Does he feel guilt for letting her be experimented on? For having to kill her? Hell, tell us that she was his daughter outside of their blood code, showing that they have the same family name. Ea. When I first scripted this, I ripped Eo's character apart as being nothing more than an Ianami Ray clone, down to being one of many identical beings. But after collecting footage for this video, I've had a small change of heart. Eo has got some really strong scenes, and seeing her grow to question her duty is a really good story beat. <laughs> I just think that more needed to be done with her character as a whole, because Eo does not have anywhere near enough story presence, being limited to the opening walk and two of the endings, Eternity and Dwellers in the Dark, which is a stupid f***ing name. I practically forgot about her for most of my playthroughs and didn't even realise when we met Leba that Eo hasn't been with the group for the entire time. She stays at home and acts cute or childish whenever possible. And this is one of my least favourite scenes in the game as a result. She just comes off as so dumb. She has a mask of her own. Why is she looking at... I want to see her character more. Seeing Eo develop is probably one of her greatest character assets. But there is no reason for her to develop because she never leaves home. Seeing Eo get a chance to interact with the characters, be there when we go through their memories, would make her that much more present and back up the notion that seeing these memories has changed her. <laughs> The Dwellers in the Dark ending, considering that to be the true ending, revolves around her being a character that we feel strongly for, but I never did and still don't. She's cute, yeah, but that's not enough for me. If this character is going to sacrifice herself for me, then I need that to mean something as well. But it didn't. Not when the character says that she will fight against her duty. Followed by immediately sacrificing herself for you because it is her duty, according to the lyrics of the song. I was made so I could protect you with my heart. And those are the only inclination of her motivations I actually have. They're still unclear to me somewhat, and I think that seeing her more and building her character more would have made them more obvious, instead of just leaving her at home as a precious and delicate object. 
怪我すると危ないんだからそうそうむやみに戦場に出るもんじゃないぜ家で待っててくれる仲間がいるダフ EO learn to fight. That was established at the beginning. She's not a good fighter. Have her learn to fight. And then have her learn to fight. Not because it is her duty, but because she cares. Because she wants to protect not just you, but Louis and y o k o m o and Mia and all of them. Just please, anything. Get her into the story, into the world, so she can grow and develop and actually be a part of Code Vein. Ah. Anyway, this concludes my thoughts on Codrain. Please leave your opinions in the comments. Have I missed any tricks that might make the characters better? Have I missed the whole point of the characters? If you want to see more videos like this, please let me know. Click the subscribe button and make sure to ring the bell. And I'll see you all soon.